happy to announce the launch of our new logo. We have evolved since our incorporation in 1997 and it is time to refresh our new look to reflect who we are today. Before I reveal our new look, however, walk with me while I take you through our journey of the last 25 years. Trust Bank was incorporated on July 3rd, 1997 and began operations on October 1st, 1997. Following the collapse of the parent company of its predecessor, Meridian, the CBG stepped in and recapitalized the bank and held the shares in trust, thus the name Trust Bank. In 1999, So, we remain true to who we have always been. As we look forward to greater achievements, we are rebranding to reflect who we are today and the future that we inspire. Our new logo has been designed to visually demonstrate our Gambian heritage and the sophisticated nature of the bank. We are moving away from the navy and gold-colored parallelogram-shaped logo to our baobab tree with a rising sun in the background. The striking outline of a baobab tree at sunrise is a familiar sight to anyone who has spent time in the Gambia. Our new logo and visual identity are inspired by our core values and spirit of being a pioneer in providing a unique banking experience. It is a completely new look that better matches the transformation we have made as a company. But we remain your trust bank. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular honor to present to you our new logo and corporate identity. Residency Estate is a gated community located in Old Yundum, proudly developed by Swami India. Perfect for all looking for a quiet life with luxury amenities within an enclosed setting. When talking about the benefits of living in a gated community, 
safety and security is top on the list. They allow extra privacy, take away the hustle of unwelcome solicitors and create a safe haven for children to play in a trusted environment without traffic or speedy vehicles. A great sense of community, developed through the meeting at a controlled communal leisure facilities, offering an integrated lifestyle. A green environment, and well-managed communal areas are keys to higher home standards, elevated quality of life, and better property value should you consider home reinvestment in the future. Added to all is the location, just next to the airport and reconstructed main road, yet tucked in the tranquility of nature. Our purpose is one your satisfaction. Contact us. Let us help you build your dream home in the Gambia. Hello and welcome to another edition of your favorite show. Buba says actually his show is a favorite now. I give that to them, the Grand Bunch Bible. Welcome to my show. It's another Thursday and of course uh, another guest uh, with me today. I have Mayor Tali Ben Suda. Uh, but after election, we want to be here. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Fatu. Let us all you for a day. Huh? <laughs> I thought you were going to wear a Jufure uh, bag. I'm wearing a new jealous collection. Samosa. It's a nice yeah, this one. This is the brand new collection from Jufure. It's beautiful. The hoodie is coming. I'll tell Musa to send you the hoodie. Uh, exactly. That is very exactly. comfortable when you're exactly. traveling. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. How have you been? It's been six months since after the election. We spoke right after the uh, election. And you, you know, during the election, we talked about the plans for KM. Yeah. Six months. What can we look at and say? this is the route the KM uh, Council is taking for the betterment of the people of KM. Uh, thank you for that question. So thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. And hello to the audience. Uh, after election, uh, we took a small break because elections was very difficult, as, yeah. as you have seen. Uh, it took a lot of energy. And of course, there was a very competitive campaign. Mm -hmm. um, so we took a bit of a break. Um, but since then, we've been working on our projects for 2024. Uh, there's a lot of plans uh, we had uh, and plans we started implementing. Mm -hmm. But of course, election year is a huge uh, distraction and uh, we had to come and recalibrate the council. Mm. So we have reconstituted the council committees. Uh, we have new expertise on board. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to set up the boards of the limited liability companies that we own as a council mm -hmm. and basically uh, prepare our projects for 2024. Uh, of course, we have some grants in the pipeline, so we had to get a lot of the paperwork done for those grants. So we expect that uh, 2024 will hit the ground running, inshallah. Wow. So, so what do we expect in 2024? Uh, you promised roads, yeah. markets, yeah. Uh, bus service. Mm. Are we still on track for those? Yes, so for the bus service, we'll launch in 2024. Um, the the buses are already uh, in the process of being ordered. Mm. Um, the uh, roads we just finished the design for the road network, 
and I think the tendering process has started. Uh, just today we finalized the lots, the different lots. Mm. So we plan to construct about 23 kilometers over the next four years. Mm. Um, some of the kilometers include drains, for example, Bacau, uh, because their main problem is the drain network. It's a health hazard. So we are going to collapse the existing drains and rebuild them, uh, five kilometers worth. Um, so by next year, January or latest, early February, we will launch the project. And of course, the, um, what is the other one? About? The markets. The markets. Yeah, yeah. so the markets, uh, the, the, they have a new... Because Ah, I'm going to say campaign. Uh, although advertised, we have 629 species. Yeah. Uh, we still uh, feel the need to continue with our project plan for example, seven markets. Uh, a lot of the delays usually is the sourcing for financing. Mm. Uh, but we have found funding um, through UNCDF and mm. through local banks. So a combination of those will make it happen. A lot of this, is it grants or just... Well, so uh, UNCDF is a mixed bag. Mm. Um, it's a $26 million packet. Um, it's to fund our municipal markets uh, objectives, our municipal transport objectives, and our waste recycling center objectives. So we are at a very advanced stage. Uh, the grant is already approved. Uh, the way it will be financed is not yet uh, established because uh, UNCDF, then they have three ways which they finance. Sometimes grant funding, mm -hmm. sometimes they act as guarantors. Sometimes they invest in your uh, entities. So basically, we are waiting for the final package, but it's approved. Yeah, and of course, I mm. saw the, um, the 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 library. Yeah, I mean, UKM is boasting for having yeah. the biggest library mm. being built in the Gambia. Mm. What at what stage uh, are you right now with the, the library? So library, I'm um, not a few delays, but it's very far. Mm -hmm. um, it was initially um, planned to uh, finish in December B. Uh, but there's, of course, with construction now at and sometimes mobilization of equipment and resources. So it's an advanced stage. The superstructure is done. So mm -hmm. we are targeting now March uh, to have it uh, finished in terms of the building. Uh, then we need to resource the library. Uh, so it's a nine, Bobupu Resource Corps is a $9 million budget. So I think they are about to go for tender for that. So more books, furniture, be. And this library is very special because of farm innovation hub. Uh, so they know I'm 3D printers and some equipment for students in technology. So all of these projects, um, do you mm. think they will all finish before the end of your term? Because of course, of course, you know, of course, you know, course, you, know you said this is your last time in, in K. Yes, right? yes, yes. So the library will definitely be done uh, early next year or mm. mid next year at the very latest. Uh, I just visited uh, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So superstructure be Parena is looking very good, solid building. And it's been built with earth blocks, which is environmentally friendly. And Yunsun climate be, keeps the building cool. Um, the parks are almost done. Bakau, Parena. Um, we have a partnership with Africa. So we have a basketball court, be a gym. Be. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think they're even adding a volleyball court. So Bakau, Ligi, Mupare. And then the six other parks, uh, the fields are ready. So the have a Pare children's playground. Be. And then the rest. I think in the next six months, the parks and the library more main potential. After your time, at the end of your time in four years, mm. what kind of KM are we looking at? What vision? Uh, how do you uh, foresee KM to look like at the end of your time in, in, in what is it, 20 what? 20 2027. Yeah. What, early what, 2027. Yeah. Well, definitely by the end of our time, we are looking at probably 15 to 20 kilometers worth of roads. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at the development of at least four new markets. Um, you look at uh, definitely having a bus service on the ground um, that will do the urban public transport. Um, we are looking at uh, the recycling facility, uh, most likely uh, to be fully done or in the process of being uh, created. Um, and of course, uh, we are looking at um, uh, the, the affordable housing, at least we want one unit at mm -hmm. the minimum yeah. you start just to prove that it can be done uh, and once we have all of those things set up 
I think the council is on good footing for future councils putting your build on top of what we have started. Uh, KMC has done very well, and we've not only done well for uh, the Carnifing municipality, but also even for the greater Banjul area. Mm -hmm. uh, in my third year in office, uh, the new identify a grant um, to build a recycling facility on, at Bakote mm -hmm. uh, with a, a landfill in West Coast region. Mm -hmm. So then you design a project and we went to the EU and we got approved. So it was it's a 48 million euro project, but it's for the greater Banjul area. Yeah. So in the project document, Dangagis Ne KMC is the promoter, but the beneficiary is for the greater Banjul area. And you, we are not naive and of course we know everything we do is for national development I mean. so we've uh, invited the ministry of lands we've invited the ministry of environment so we are we are working as uh, 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 sister councils and also as our parent body the ministry we're working and trying to coordinate this because the benefactors gambians like so i think all of these things are, are wonderful so i can say within the eight years uh, this KMC has raised almost $5 billion in funding, oh. which is, I think, unheard of. Oh. Right. Why do you think that you were able to attract that kind of funding to the municipality? I think it's the, the professionalism. Uh, I'm, uh, in my campaign, we talked about this. Yeah. Uh, the, the biggest development, Bungur Muna Ini or Council Muna Ini, is institutional reform. Mm -hmm. And it's the development that people cannot see. I'm a Gambia, uh, when people don't see physical things, then they find the development amut. Yeah. But little do they know the best development a leader can do mo inga capacitize a nini. And then nga the tools to work and bring governance in the institution where things are done right. Uh, there are checks and balances, there's transparency, there's accountability. So in Munyu office twenty eighteen. It was a political enterprise. Mm -hmm. So we brought a lot of institutional reform. You capacitize staff. Be Johlen Vision, uh, one of my directors said, before Manma arrived, they did not know what a, a, a day in the life of a director should be. They did not know ne, they should work on objectives and project-based uh, uh, programs. And they did not even know, ne, as a director, you run a department. And for that department to work, there must be communication, etc. So that's the biggest, biggest development we've done in KMC. And mm -hmm. then even if you have a highly political mayor and council, the institution, as far as tampa yeah. uh, with the, the way the institution works, KMC will continue to have. So coming back to your question, credibility. Yeah. What partners want to see is a credible, professional institution which Gambia sometimes is very difficult. Yeah. Um, so if you can assist civil servants to do the right thing and reform them, and not bring your politics into their daily work, I think that is very key to have sustainable development. And I think that is very important, mm -hmm. having strong institutions. I think oh. um, in any society, you know, even in the developed world, um, Lulu, Mode, Dohal, Rio. And I remember talking to somebody a few weeks ago when a boy came to Dodegis Halis. KMC, Dodegis Dara Halis. You don't yeah. see money lying anywhere Absolutely. in KM. Absolutely. And, and I said, oh, really? You know, my, yeah. my folk, okay, direct Dodegis yeah. Halis. Yeah. And, you know, and I think uh, at the beginning, it made it things even difficult for you because a yeah. lot of the staff even felt. Yeah that you use the yeah. take loopholes yeah. um, and that really had brought a little um strained relations that mm. some people had animosity mm. because of that mm. uh, what is the situation on the ground right now i know before last time we spoke there were issues right. that was there but right. also there were issues with the ceo right, and right, it right, distracted right. you a lot it went into the campaign Absolutely. now you have a new ceo what is the atmosphere right now at the sea? At the I, I was just saying this this morning. KMC is highly stable uh, right now. Uh, definitely. I think um, I have never seen KMC more stable now uh, mm -hmm. than at any point. Yeah. Uh, uh, right now, definitely, like you said, even since CEO of SB, mm -hmm. Mom, he worked in Janjambure, he worked in Mansa Konko, mm -hmm. and he came to me, Minema, KMC, the monopoly, because they, I never see money. Mene can do this halis. Mene go see you. When we came, we changed all of those things. Man, I think for the past three years, just ma any physical cash even lying around, because we work with checks, we work with vouchers, we work with uh, uh, transactions. Even our salaries are paid online. 
is uh, most of our salaries are paid digitally. Only day laborers, you know, they um, are cash at the cash out cashier. Mm. So uh, basically, that's why I say institutional reform is very important. I cannot claim I did it alone. Manuma said more the vision and the plan. Mm -hmm. And one of the best things that uh, uh, we did was bringing in outside experts to join our committees. So every committee of KMC, whether it be finance, whether it be development, we have architects, we have engineers, we have ACCA, accountants, auditors. Every committee has four councillors and three experts from outside. Yeah. Last time it was three councillors and three experts. So they need of guidance. Mm -hmm. So even at the policy level, governance level, councillor you have experienced a lot of growth. Imagine four years not talking ACCA holder on a finance committee. You're going to learn accounting. It's like a crash course on accounting. Mm -hmm. So I think all of these things have really transformed KMC. And there's a lot of discipline. All right. I'm not saying KMC is perfect by all means, but we are far better than uh, where we were in the past. And I think it's really a sample for other municipalities. Because if I can tell you, Nyunbala Nyunyo Council, sometimes when you talk six months, good guiding am salary. In the past five years, we've only been late on salaries once. Once. And it was for three days. Three days when late salary. Mm. And I remember it was even on the newspaper because mm. staff in Minunko. Yeah. So I think all of these reforms have made the institution stronger. Not only are we the highest paid council in terms of salaries, uh, our salary bill is by, by far the biggest of all councils. So with all of that, we're able to generate enough income to pay our people and conduct basic services. So. I also saw that um, you, know, you guys got a grant to, um, I think, capacity building for councillors. I saw that somewhere on your okay, right, page. Right, right. So it is part of the UNCDF. Yes. Okay. So it is in preparation for the $26 million grant. Oh, okay. Right. So one of the things we said was, this is a lot of money, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, we don't know how to deal with it, mm -hmm. right? We've never experienced that kind of money. So what we want is a capacity building program mm -hmm. for not just the councillors, uh, the governance level, but also the boards of governors or board of directors for the companies we've set up. So they have the right capacity, they have the right feasibility studies, they have the right structures to be able to absorb these projects and bring value. Because in Gambia, many times, they are digging lots of money and then implementation, though, is from Duga. Yeah. So we want to make sure council have the capacity to implement uh, these projects. Now, let's talk about decentralization. Yeah. I mean, you went through something with central <laughs> government, local <laughs> government, some, I mean, up to campaign time, right? Yeah, yeah. You were still dealing with that. And I remember when we sat here, you know, your biggest cry was, we cannot even employ um, anything above grade three, right? Yeah. Uh, it has to come from central government, mm. uh, from the CEOs to finance directors and others. Yeah. And it became a problem if you want to discipline them. Yeah. And it became a problem. And, you know, we have seen that happening in Brekama right. and Basse. Right. And now in Basse, um, the, the, when, the, when the chairman came and his team, I think they, they had a first meeting was June 5th. Mm. By June 16th, they had passed the resolution yeah. To, to fire the CEO and the finance director because for mismanagement. Mm. And later on, one month down the line, the service commission approved yeah. that firing. Yours mm. took what? The longest to get approval three, two from years, the service three commission. Years. Yes. And Brikama also did the same. Yep, uh, yep. They still haven't got uh, approval. Yep. And Basse, uh, you know, got another yep. chairman, um, acting CEO and acting finance director. And they, all, they, they dismissed that person mm. again mm. because of mismanagement. Yep. Uh, but apparently, um, I'm told um, the, they were advised by the local government ministry that they, can, they don't have those powers, they could not do it. It seems like the same trend is coming. Um, chairman and uh, councillors feeling that uh, this person is not doing right by the people of the municipality. We, don't, we cannot work with them and you still don't have powers to remove those people. What advice at this point will you give to Young Kubadawa of Brekama? Because they're going through exactly what you're going through. Yeah. Even, even, even Basse. It's mm. just that, you know, they have complied to what mm. the ministry had advised them. Mm. But in Brekama, they have not. And mm. right now, that's what they're going through. What kind of advice would you say you right. would give to I them? I think in the case of Basse, the people were dismissed. They said they were dismissed. But I checked with the ministry yesterday. They mm. said, yes, they were dismissed. But they had told them that you cannot do that. And... 
they are still working. That's what the ministry told me. Or oh, they are not dismissed. No, they said no, no. The the, the acting, the new acting people. Yeah. But the other ones were um, they are dismissed. They said they were dismissed right. because when the commission um, gave revelations, they had to indict them. Right. The right. reason why they could not act in Brekama is because number one, uh, according to the, my sourcing ministry, um, Brekama has not provided enough. Um, evidence to say this is what these people have done right. and also Brikama has not followed procedure just like KMC had not followed <laughs> procedure you just you you took the decision by yourself uh, according to the ministry's um, press release you cannot be the judge and the jury you know you had powers and then the other powers lies with the commission and the ministry right. so this w w when you look at this situation what yeah. would you say um, Brikama should do should they also right. follow the right procedure okay, so I think um, I wouldn't say Birkama's case and our case are exactly the same. No, of then, course, yeah. there's similarities and there's unique things about each case. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've advised young Kobo before, during, and even now, we mm -hmm. do discuss. And uh, basically, even when I visited them yesterday, what yeah. I said, look, there's bad laws in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, bad laws are laws that are morally bankrupt. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day, they are also laws. Mm -hmm. um, we did not do anything against our lawyer's advice. Mm -hmm. We did not do anything against our experts on our committee's advice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I believe they're also following advice from their lawyers. Uh, but basically, I think I can't speak for Yankuba. Mm. Uh, what I can say now for KMC is that we are focused on delivering services. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've done the fight, and frankly, we, we don't want to engage again. Was it, a good, was it worth it? It's worth, it's, it was it's worth, worth every minute of it. Okay. Um, I think, generally speaking, um, I would like to say that, of course, we are politicians running institutions. Mm -hmm. Our government is also, they are politicians running the government. Mm -hmm. And of course, we are different political parties. So whereas, of course, in Basse, it looked like uh, they allowed them to go ahead and do what needed, mm -hmm. even though I have to fact check what you just said. Yeah, that's what the um, minister told me. So in, I have not checked in Basse. But in in Birkama, you, you see they handle it totally uh, differently. But my, 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 right. my, in fact, I can, let me clarify this. Yeah. My own point of contention yeah. was this, yeah, um, yeah. Basse sent in their what in one month they got a response from the service commission exactly in one exa month exactly to act on and they fired you know they indicted right. the other finance that and minister right. but in brikama they sent it since october november december in two and a half months still they have not gotten a response yeah, but so when i checked they said because brikama has not given them enough evidence yeah That's so of I'm course saying. there's uh, political undertones but let's let's move away from the specific details of each case and yeah. go general yeah about what council's mandate should be, mm -hmm. and what the law says about how councils should be run. Yeah. And what has happened under the previous regime where the constitution and the local government are, are tampered with, uh, and it contradicts even in terms of the, finding, the founding uh, 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 statutes mm -hmm. about councils. So yeah. councils in the local government act, within the first section, it says councils are autonomous, highly autonomous institutions. Mm -hmm. But then when you go in actually the, the beef of the matter, you will realize there's a lot of contradictions as to what councils can and cannot do. Cannot do. And uh, secondly, generally, when you're elected to run an institution, yeah. you should have the freedom to run that institution. And the two most important things in running an institution is the resources, human and financial. So when it comes to financial resources, it says councils have independence on their finances. They have full control. When it comes to human resources, it says councils have some control, mm. but not full control, which is quite interesting. And when you speak to former mayors during the PPP era, they will tell you, I, the mayor, could fire the CEO mm. alone, without even council authority, without even uh, a local government That's service during commission Jawara during Jawara's time. Okay. So what happened? from Jawara's time to now. Mm. The Local Government Act has been tampered with many, many times, of course, for political reasons. And uh, basically, you cannot elect somebody, hold them accountable every election, because that's where us, the mayors, are fired or hired. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you don't allow us to run the institutions as we deem fit. And I always said, this country, of course, has many bodies mm -hmm. that are higher than councils. Yeah. We have the parliament, we have uh, 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 the ministries, etc. All you have to do is set regulations. Mm -hmm. 
all you have to do is have laws mm -hmm. where councils cross lines or cannot deliver services, then you can hold them to account. But you must allow them to administratively control the direction of their institutions. Yeah. Now imagine the president could not fire or hire ministers yeah, and he had to go to parliament to hire the ministers. One of the reasons why they were or to fire the ministers. did not go through. Then his hands would be tied. Yeah. His hands would be tied. He mm -hmm. could not implement. He could not have a cabinet that even respects him. Yeah. Because they would say, this, why would I listen to him? He cannot fire me. Yeah. So basically, imagine that is the same thing happening at the council level. When we go to our counterparts in the Western world, or even in Senegal, it is the mayor actually yeah. that hires and fires his administration, and the mayor is answerable to the council. Mm. The council, including the mayor, are answerable to the parliament. Yeah. So basically, these laws have been tampered with so much that it cause, causes institutional dysfunction. Because now, if the CEO cannot be fired by the council, mm -hmm. cannot be fired directly by the ministry or the local government service commission, it takes a whole process. Then you make that person invincible. And that person doesn't answer to the electorates. Whereas us, the council members and mayors, answer to the ele yes. electorates. So who does the CEO, in definition, answer to? The ministry. No, because the ministry cannot fire them without us. Mm. They cannot? No. We have to recommend for their termination to the Local Government Service Commission. And the ministry actually, even in law, has no hand in the matter. What the law actually says, every council should establish an appointments and establishment committee yeah. that deals with HR matters. That establishment and appointment committee recommends to its Local Government Service Commission on staff matters. So ministry is an observer. So that brings... A very interesting question. If yeah. the ministry is an observer, yes. the local, um, I haven't seen, I'm just going to, even yeah. in your case, yeah. it was the peers that I saw who was on the yes. radio talking about exactly. back and forth with yeah, the ministry. Exactly, exactly. And, and Brikama case also is the ministry yeah. that I saw uh, letters coming from instead of the service commission. Exactly. And also even the letter to the banks or to the other staff, it yeah, was yeah. from the ministry. Yeah. If that is, if the ministry role, ministry's role is to observe, then why would the banks honor those letters from the ministry? They should not. So these are all dysfunctionalities of mm -hmm. what is happening in government and their relationship with the councils. So first of all, it says in the Finance and Audit Act that councils have full control over their financial resources. Only a council, similar to a board of directors of a company, mm -hmm. can instruct a bank about signatories. That's clear in the law. Secondly, only uh, a, a, the local government service commission, given a recommendation from the council, should have a say on staff matters. So council recommend movements, deployments, disciplinary matters, employment, terminations, goes directly to the local government service commission. Mm. That is, by the way, appointed by the minister, and they should officiate without fear or favor. So the, on my early days, these are the things I was fighting. And they started saying Talib Dafa Digger Bopa, he challenged authority. Because I knew this is where we would end up. The ministry should not be the one sending letters. They should not be a middleman between the service commission and councils. They are a regulator. What a ministry needs to do is develop regulations and take it to parliament. What a ministry should do is to observe. If councils cross lines, then they can go and call up a council meeting and try to correct the council. If the council fails to comply, then they can escalate it to the president. That's section 151 of the Local Government Act. So these are all prescribed by law. But you see, they choose the parts of the law that favors government or their political agenda, and then they dismiss the others. So where they're relying, they say the chief executive officer yeah. is the chief accounting officer of the council. Yes. So that's where they're relying on. Mm -hmm. But there's a section that also says the chief executive officer is answerable and under the direction and control of the council. But the, 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 the chief executive officer is appointed by the ministry? No. Service commission? Service commission. Okay. In consultation, consultation with, with the chairperson or the mayor, of, mayor the council. of the council. But they are not even consulting us. <gasps> So the law is so So the ministry with. is silent in all of these. There yeah. should be an observer. Their role should be an observer. It's mission. an observer. Mm -hmm. And it's a regulator. Okay. And uh, if they believe a council has contravened the Local Government Act, Section 151 
the minister can cause the chairperson of the council to call up a general council meeting where the minister chairs and tries to correct the council and points to the act and says, you must comply with this section and that section of the act. If the council so refuses to comply, the minister can escalate the issue to the president who may call a commission of inquiry. And that is a ministerial commission, commission. of inquiry, mm -hmm. different from the presidential commission of inquiry. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. And if a council is not able to provide services, and if a council is having dysfunction, mm. the president may take the matter to the parliament to take administrative control of the council for, I believe, three months or six months until the matter is resolved. So there are all these sections in the Local Government Act. So if a government and parliament have these powers, why not allow elected officers full control so they may deliver services? So these are all prescribed by law, but the, the Gambia is such a country that anything goes. So I don't feel that there's a strong, strong respect for laws and the Constitution. Um, is it because the laws have been tampered with at some point, some people, people's roles have elapsed? Because, you know, you, when you speak to the ministry, I mean, I mean, yesterday, you know, before the show, I, I made sure I speak to the ministry and also had the version of the Brikama area council. Mm -hmm. at, at some point, I was confused because, mm -hmm. you know, listening to the ministry, I was convinced that uh, maybe Brikama did not follow all the right procedures. So, and then listening to Brikama, I got confused. And now oh, listening to you, so there's is, something, is there's... it because the law has been tampered many times at some point? Um, so look, okay. Let's say I was the uh, let's say I was the I was the minister. Yeah. Okay, and I understand the local government act. Yeah. If I felt that Birkama crossed the line mm -hmm. or Birkama did something they should not do, yeah, I should look at the local government act section 151, and it says I should call a general council meeting in Birkama where the chairman sits and the councillors, and I'll draw their attention to the procedure. If they still refuse, that's when I escalate. So it is. Stages. Administration is a process. Mm. There is no business for police with arms to enter in an administrative process. It's a process. And even if it gets to the police, it has to get there through a process. So it's not just because Malo Opadole, I have the guns, I have the power, I will do what I like. Because you set precedence. Mm -hmm. And once that precedence is set, remember, political power changes. In our lifetimes, we've experienced a PPP government, an APRC government, a coalition government, uh, NPP government, who's going to come next? Will they use these cases as precedents to bully the opposition? Because today you may be a ruling party, tomorrow you may end up an opposition, because we've seen three ruling parties yeah. end up as an opposition. Yeah. So that's why it is very important when you have power to set right precedents to obey the rule of law. And if you feel that the law is not quite conducive, then come up with constitutional amendments. But definitely the wrong way to go about things is to use raw power to, to get your way. And it will set a bad, bad precedent for many governments to come. And I mean, do you think, is it a coincidence? We saw the president in Brikama a um, few days ago. Yeah. And I, you know, the remarks, yeah. especially from my friend, Honorable Ahmad Ba, were not really very nice. You know, when he called um, the council liars and fabricating stories against the government and he also, the president, also, he said something very interesting. The president said, um, councils don't own markets, they own the markets. Um, and I remember during campaign time, people were saying, you, you did not build any market. So if that is the responsibility of government, uh, why, is, why are we saying Talib did not build? But, you know, those remarks yeah. came and the following day, didn't this incident happen, the letter came. Yeah. I mean, I, I have said to so many people, I know the PS, Safi Sankar, I have so much regard for her. She's a professional. And I know what she went through in the system. And I said to somebody, she's not the person who will put people through something like this, regardless knowing what she went through in the same system. I said that. So I don't know if whether it's a coincidence, but the president said that, and the following day, two days after we saw all of these incidents happening. Is it a coincidence? Do you think um, it's politically motivated? Well, of course, it's always politically motivated, but the contradictory... But they said you guys are also always 
taking uh, trying to score political points to the, say the, they are bullying us less because a lot of people say that really got you a lot of sympathy because you know ah talib is that what young is also trying to do somebody said to me maybe that's what you guys are trying to do well, well look i don't want to go into the specifics mm -hmm. i'll just give you an example two days ago they were saying a lot of things mm -hmm. Yesterday, they're saying that they want national unity and dialogue yeah. in the same week. So they're contradicting themselves. Uh, secondly, I am not trying to get into the specifics of what happened. Yeah. All I'm saying is the Local Government Act specifies a course of action mm -hmm. that government should take if they feel a council is crossing line. You don't have to go to a podium to talk about it. Use the exhaust the administrative processes. And you definitely don't have to go to the police uh, to get your way because you set a bad precedent. Some, I was reading a quote from the Dalai Lama the other day. He said, humans live as if they are never going to die. Mm. So when we have power, we forget we are going to lose power no someday. Yeah. And what we leave is history. Yeah. So sometimes I wish leaders would think of the day they are, never, they are not in power and reflect on now, today, and act the right way while they're in power. So basically, what I am saying here is, let's look at best practices around the world. How do councils operate? Because at the end of the day, it is for the best services we can deliver to the Gambian people. Government need councils to work, and councils need government to work. How can you make sure councils work? You have to give them administrative control. Mm -hmm. You have to give them control over their financial resources. And then you can use the carrot and stick approach. Give them incentive to work harder. Subventions, loans, zero interest loans. We can build affordable houses. We can build roads. We can build markets. At the same time, if we cross lines, you can bring regulation to make sure at least councils work within the vision of government, mm -hmm. or at least within the parameters of the law. But the, the pettiness at which we operate sometimes is baffling. Administration should not be petty and certainly should not be personal. It's about rules, it's about plans, it's about objectives, etc. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I find that Gambia, the talk is too much and the work is very little. You know, and development certainly is just not about infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It's not just about what people can see. Yeah. These are the things we need to fix. So future leaders are forced to do the right thing, are forced to compromise. Leadership is about compromise. It's about meeting people in the middle. We are not an autocratic regime. We are not a kingdom. We are not a communist country. So compromise is important to move the country forward. And we have to be sincere about it. We cannot talk about how rebellious and bad the opposition is two days ago, and today we are talking about national reconciliation. So basically, that's my take on the What do we need to do for mm -hmm. us to be, before I come to the reconciliation, yeah. now for you, KMC went mm -hmm. through something like this, yeah. and Rikama is going through it. What do you think is going to, how do you think this is going to affect the ordinary people of West Coast. Um, two days ago, the chairman and the entire councillors were at the police station. Yeah. Even yesterday, they were there. Yeah. Meaning, no administrative work has Absolutely taken place not. in that yeah. region. Yeah. And obviously, I don't know what is what is the status today. But two days ago, they were not even able to pay salaries because yeah. their accounts were frozen. Frozen. Mm. Um, how does this affect you? Did not yours did not go to this extreme, yeah. like freezing their accounts and everything. Yeah. Now, how does this? How do you think this will affect? Uh, the operations of West Coast. West Coast is a big region. Absolutely. How do you think this will affect them to, to be able to do the work of the ordinary people? Yeah, so ours escalated gradually over a two-year period. This one happened very fast. Very it's fast. like fast forward. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I was talking to youngs today. Uh, I think to, still to date they can't pay salaries. Wow. Um, of course, uh, the BAC was already a, a struggling council. And now they're definitely not able to operate at all. Um, I think end of day, there's a lot of moral, uh, 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 people are discouraged, people are demoralized, whether it be the population, whether it be the council, even the staff. Yeah. I think it's, it's important for everybody to slow down. And I was even having this conversation with the youngs. I think it's very important for everybody to slow down, mm -hmm. be it the government, be it the council, be it the staff, and start reasoning. 
and there's already processes prescribed by law, mm -hmm. let those processes be exhausted step by step. Once you put ego in this process, mm -hmm. you poison it. Once you put emotion in this process, you poison it. And all parties, whether it be the staff, the council, the government, should realize something. They are all serving the people. It's, people. That council is nobody's personal house, mm. same as KMC. Yeah. It's nobody's private property. Mm. You're there on behalf of the people. Yeah. So why be personal about it? So I think government has processes they need to exhaust before they go to the lens that they went to. And certainly arresting council members yeah. is definitely terrible. It's bad news for the Gambia. Mm. Even if somebody saw on Al Jazeera or BBC councillors arrested in Gambia, that is bad news. Yeah. That can diminish the con uh, confidence of tour tourism, foreign direct investment, you name it. So I think we need to de-escalate and then we need to go by what the law has prescribed. I saw women, you know, to the, I saw women, the women of Brekama, yeah. and I was watching this interview with that Buba did with the women. One of the ladies was speaking, and she he, she cried because yeah. you know she, they were talking about how their markets were demolished yeah. and how council was already creating something Space, for yeah, them, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they they felt closer to council Absolute, at this point, absolutely. and they at at that point they felt hopeless. Yeah. You know, when you hear your your people speak like that, yeah. that is emotional. And I think you you, you said the yeah, right. Just like thing. when politicians fight, the people suffer. The people suffer, yeah. and that that's why you should not fight. Yeah. Now let's talk about the demolition. Yeah. Um, it started, you know, it came to KM. Yeah. yeah. At what? How bad was it for for the people of KM? So what I always say about the demolition, halad be ban, but the ninko defe. I would say is not good. Bad. Wow. Um, I believe, of course, like every country, Gambia is for organized. Mm -hmm. Gambia should be orderly. Mm -hmm. uh, m uh, people should not make the streets market. They should be in markets to sell. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's a very, very, very poor country. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of unemployment. There's a lot of underemployment. Yeah. So most people are for that. So true, we want to have a country as organized as uh, UK, as the, the, the Germany, etc., as even in Senegal, it's that, that from more organized. First. But yeah. remember, those countries are rich, richer than us. Yeah. Um, the economy is working. Most people are employed, etc. So I think that's what we're a process. Uh, I, I know the, the idea is good, but the execution is poor. I think there should be a process because a lot of these people don't have nowhere to go. And Gambia certainly did not plan enough markets over the last 20, 30 years. Yeah. Then you allow Nini to settle in Bena, yeah, yeah. but there's not been a plan mm -hmm. to build all these vendor spaces. Mm -hmm. And because you don't join Bera, you don't have shops, you construct them, they have not been keeping up with the demand. You construct your own private shops, like you. Yeah. Over the years, they could keep up with the demand. Supply be they could keep up with the demand. So there's already a huge shortage. And now you've aggravated that shortage by demolition. Secondly, a lot of these people invest in Halis Bobari, Sisen Kiosk, 50,000, 25,000, 30,000. So if you demolish these things, mm -hmm. you literally impoverish a family overnight. Yeah. So family, you can see uh, Papa, you can see that you can school or you can see in the depends in the lake, overnight zero. Now the new Ampunyan to survive. And you're talking about thousands of, of families. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, I think the new one a prolonged exercise. And then you run a death by section. They should have sectionalized it. Were, were you guys no. notified to Purungen? I know you were notified, yeah. but were you given time to say, let's. Give us time to create at least some temporal stuff for our people. Was that that negotiation between you and... and so I believe the, the chief executive officer of KMC, like most councils, uh, went to State House for this discussion. Mm -hmm. um, the, the timeline, we saw it on the um, uh, uh, press. But now they're executing. I think what was important is not just about notice. It's mm -hmm. about where, where do they go? Where's the solutions? So KMC, anyway, we are doing our best. Mm -hmm. We know at the end of the day, they are pushing to get the country orderly. So we don't feel that we need to 
go against it. But mm -hmm. what we are doing now is to bring solutions. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the NUDEF assessment of all our markets, yeah. there's 629 spaces available for vendors to go mm -hmm. between shops, kiosk, a table. Mm -hmm. So we have advertised by market land more available and all interested parties can go to the market manager and uh, uh, allocate, get a spot allocated. I'll put it on the record. Mm -hmm. The exercise idea B is good. Execution B is poor. Leg, the KMC Muna provide for all of these people. Ninga ham the same mars gain a lens yon. Low six hundred and twenty nine species like among them. But like I said, when I had this vision uh two, three years back, even before the exercise started, more than you am the plan to build seven new markets. Okay. I know sooner or later Jai Mbeda Munta sustainable, mm -hmm. Munta continue yeah. in a decade that wants to develop. So what we've been struggling with is how do we get these financial resources to make it happen? And just know, if cooperation was very good between government and local government, a social security housing finance corporation, mm -hmm. whose main mandate is social security mm -hmm. to protect the vulnerable, they could have given soft loans to councils to build these markets and they can be repaid over a period. Mm -hmm. But these are the complications that don't allow us to cooperate. But like I've said, we have a $10 million uh, packet from UNCDF to mm. develop these, these markets. No, sorry, six, sorry, six million dollars six million to develop these uh, uh, markets. So hopefully in the next few years, uh, there are more vendor space available. Now let's talk about um, the regional governors. You know, they go malanga was to help. Because I think it's a... The campaign that borrowed of go on the dinner with the regional governor. I'm not going to Next week, you appoint a regional right, so, governor. Regional governors knew now. Um, I've not heard you say anything about it. I saw President Mune. What na banjul dema Mune? Mom, amut dipite banjul. Amut land me banjul. Legi. Mom, kai fok mu umko hamu mo ko represent banjul. Coordinate ko government lumbuga def banjul. Dah mumu na ligay banjul ligay mfis. Do you, th I mean, do my digger. I'm like, Mr. President, um, I would have said, I wish I had an interview with him. Um, why can't you work with councils? They are there. Uh, they are the representatives of the people. People kneel in Tana, they kneel in Bugaligia. Ah, Muneka Sapati, Neko Sapati, Warga Munaligia, you know, Tam Gambian Lake. Muna, you end up Sassi Sapati, Ken Hamut, come Legi Mom, the Makanyo Abai. Why not come yours and you get them? You are getting them. You are still young. You are getting them. Why are they? Why are they still The regional governors. All right. So, man, the regional governors and in our case, you know, executive coordinators. Yes, executive coordinators. Um, definitely, it doesn't bother me. It in the sense, ne, I have read the law. Mm -hmm. uh, in my mind, what can a coordinator do? that a minister cannot do. Because according to the Sohole in the law is the level of a director okay. in the government circle. Yeah, in the, the government hierarchy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, secondly, their mandate as far as councils are concerned mm -hmm. is to supervise supervise activities in your and so they you deaf bond for bole new ministry. Oh okay. That's it. So you know not supervise well, it's to look at new 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 def. Okay. So, so we can then you know you feel the definitely new bond. Then you bole, see ministry be okay. so ministry can act. Okay. But what would a uh, governor see that the ministry cannot see already? Mm -hmm. Remember, new bond you like came. feel a ministry deca di. Wow. Feel a president deca. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, past governments did not just see the the sense in it. Yeah. Uh, because go minister be who's more powerful than the Even did not governor, that, yeah. president who's more powerful than everybody in the country, yeah. we are right under their noses. Everything happening in KMC and Banjul, mm -hmm. this is a very small country. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, uh, when, uh, as far as the last governments uh, are thinking of it, when a council develops from a rural area to a municipality or city, mm -hmm. then you no longer need uh, these positions. You just pass it to the mayor and the uh, 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 mm -hmm. sorry the mayors yeah so basically when i read the law i also heard what they were saying i couldn't be bothered i said look man i have very short time to execute for the people i cannot spend my time arguing about what should happen what should not happen as far as central government is concerned mm -hmm. if central government feels they need positions in every region 
that is their mandate as far as it doesn't interfere with our work for the people. And I don't see any way it interferes with my work. In terms of the debate about its legality, um, what the law says in the exception of KMC and Banjul, all regions should have governors. Yeah. But Nyomtam Nyine Amna section Bohane, they should be executive coordinators yeah. for KM and Banjul. I think they're quoting an old section of the yeah. local government That's what act. Lamin Jeda was yeah, it's an old section of the local government act that was gotten rid of. It was gotten rid of. Rid of. Yeah. Wow. Like Kamga, once you start breaking law or Azangur Topolo law, once you set that precedence, like you just keep doing it. Mm. And Doko de Tesa. Because you look at politics and say, how much advantage? Harama defli, harama defli. And it never stops. Yeah. Money, it is very important that you follow a uh, procedure. Now, in terms of generally, Nakala Gambia set it up. Mm -hmm. um, I think, to be honest, mayors, Nyunsun mandate, and councils are different from central government. Yes. I, don't, I, I always felt a mayor should have never have to take care of uh, central government services in their region, yeah. right? Because the whole local government act, I am to provide services from the council. Okay. Government is to provide services from the government. Yeah. And really, we don't, don't have much business with each other. Our mandates are different. Mm -hmm. My only regret is that you don't have to buy a mandate and you don't have to buy a mandate. You don't have to buy a mandate. And we can cooperate, we can coordinate, that is fine. When they nyom, they want to have their cake and eat it. That's the way I see it. They want to interfere with councils. At the same time, they don't want councils to uh, uh, have their autonomy. So, but if there was an executive coordinator and his business was just government, and so government ame tali momunyo supervise, so government ame security concern momunyo topoto, services, staff, resources, So, 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 so uh, coordinators, right. are they going to be housed in council? No, 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 they cannot. They, are, they cannot? No, no. So they definitely have to find their own building. They cannot? No, That's they cannot. Building. Council, no, council. council is not a government building. It's a council building. Uh, so council, we are autonomous. Our building, our resources are our own. So we are yep, to go to the building, we are going to go to premises, we are going to go it's a public building. Yes. But our offices are under our control. Is so that is one point of the act. It is very, very clear. Mm -hmm. All council financial resources and assets are hundred percent under council's control. Government Amusibat. Well, we are seeing what is happening in Birkama. Can government the accounts are frozen by central government. Yeah. And yeah, well Birkama has to has to go to court. I know they have a strategy um uh, to stop that from continuing. But it's definitely breaking the law. Uh, council has full control over their financial Finances, resources. resources. If there's an issue with the finances, that's why we go to FPAC, yeah. Modern Union Parliament. Yes. We are audited by a national audit office. We are answerable to the parliament through the Finance Public Accounts Committee. So government on the already have oversight function. Ministry sees our budget every year. They see our financial statements every year. Then you they inspect quarterly. Mm -hmm. They can inspect us quarterly. So you know, they already have their hands to know what That's is happening in council. Yeah. So why not allow councils to operate freely? So the regional coordinators, but they, huh? President Munemom Amut uh, Deputy. Uh, banjo. I think so it's political. It's yeah, politically so think, motivated. Because at some point you're thinking, okay, wow. you need one lola. This I'm is going on, I think they were watching hands. So I think they were pretty convinced they would win in the local government election. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, it was not good for them uh, because KMC, they have three councillors mm -hmm. out of 19. Yeah. UDP have 15. Mm. Um, they have two MPs out of seven. Yeah. And of course, they don't have the mayor. So, because of that, they felt, okay, we need somebody political on the ground. So, it's certainly not about administrative efficiency. Mm -hmm. Or I'm not even bef the presidents before. Uh, it's purely about politics. But it's about countering right? the, the council. Because so Sokoset Law, yeah. councils know the heart of politics in any region. Yeah. See councils, yeah. you know, they are political, yeah. you know. So, the yeah. government, so they chair mayor be a new council or see be a party line. The man government, man, in the development, I need somebody to let the people know that I'm the one doing all of this. I'm going to bring somebody but, who but, will push that to the. But to I the think position. government, the, the people know what government services 
are happening in the region and what council services are happening in the region. People know. So government of the Italy, government, let that tell council. So government of service, people already know. I think uh, uh, in their minds, they just need somebody mm -hmm. uh, that they feel in a kukumuna counter politics. But it doesn't work. Birkama had a governor yeah. for all these years. Yankoba still won. Mm. Sirifo was part of UDP. He won. Um, uh, 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 LRR, LRR the same. So that doesn't affect it politics. Doesn't. It, it does doesn't. not. I think it's just in their psychology. Maybe it will help them. I don't see how it can. But like I said, I don't want to distract myself this time. And I'm so, I'm not seems, coming back. It seems like you're not ready to fight this time with them. When no, it comes to I will fight if I have to, but <laughs> not if I don't have to. So <laughs> I would I don't I don't like fighting. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. I, I I certainly don't want to fight with my own government. Mm -hmm. uh, we are the same. I see as little and big government trying yeah. to bring development. To people. I want to cooperate. I want to coordinate. I want to share ideas, share resources. And everybody knows I am a collaborator. Mm. Um, but of course, if I felt my rights were being directly trampled on, I would not hesitate to, to fight. Um, but at the end of the day, we have very limited time in office. I have very limited time in office. I know I, I just want two term limit as mayor. Mm -hmm. um, the president, even if he wanted to go ahead, as far as this time is concerned, he only has a uh, few more years, years in, in office. Mm -hmm. And same as the parliamentarians and the councillors. So if you're thinking about your time, it's better spent bringing progress than the up and down, back and forth. Um, so I've looked at the, the pros and cons about fighting this executive coordinator. I'm not saying for all councils, but for me, I would rather spend my time uh, bringing meaningful development. Okay, now Commission of Inquiry. Council mm. Mumbai for help. Do you have You look at Basse. Yeah. Who dig it? Do dig in a Basse? Yeah. Danga Danga Jale. Ah, Brika mo nyuo gunza. Why Gisnen chairman a guy me some of the revelations that are coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're thinking, is this another country? Is this our people? Yeah. Basse area council linga dig a see obc form the co accept act uh, finance director bi yangi na ndax li benen rew la kmc est ce que duñ dega lu melni su demesi no no i think i think kmc kmc the only issue that has already surfaced moy this ngiri ngaro we had with the former ceo yeah. that is the only issue am nga kmc is the most investigated council ever yeah i say the most investigated council in the history of gambia because one this is the first time you make an opposition council to government. Mm -hmm. KMC has always been with government, whether PPP era, APRC era. This is the first time in KMC, and I think that is true also for many councils. Many councils yeah. But at the same time, Tamit, mm -hmm. um, uh, we have had direct confrontations with government several times. There was the Mbalit project yeah. when they didn't want it to happen. There was uh, uh, the issue of the, CEO, uh, the former CEO, yeah. mm -hmm. where there was a big push and pull. And based on all of these things, remember they send in, in investigators, special audits, all these things. So we are the most scrutinized council already. Mm. And with all of government's resources, the only issue is the issue we had with the CEO. CEO. And I think that is public knowledge now. Yeah. Mother Manila, when I came, I'm gonna, if they really wanted scandals about council, they should investigate pre-2018. Mm. When money was used directly for political events, Council Mom was a mess. It was mm. just a political institution. Mark, money from the market was used to uh, do rallies, etc. But they're not interested in that period because this is the politically attractive period where their direct opposition mm. is in power. So KMC, we are not worried at all. You know, man, I barely know what is happening at the uh, Commission of Inquiry um, because I cannot. Before it's a whole day activity, mm -hmm. and I have to work. But I do, of course, follow on the newspapers and follow what is going on. But everything that is going on in other councils, especially, it is a symptom of Lumaladon Wahni. Mm -hmm. If the people who are supposed to govern the administration mm -hmm. don't have administrative control, cannot mm -hmm. hire, cannot fire, cannot, the impunity yeah. continues. And impunity, the administrator will end up corrupting the policy makers mm. because some policy makers will give up and say ah, i cannot get rid of you i have to work with you we're here for four years and this is what has been happening in all the councils so basically 
over the years, a lot of things have happened that are bad. Mm. Some uh, other councils, what they did also, they just gave up. So, look, I cannot fire this guy. Yeah. correct. So, basically, they just gave up. And a lot of these CEOs, because you need so amulkulasetrek. You eventually start doing things, and eventually you find yourself to be a corrupt person, which was not your intention yeah. going into public service in the first place. So, Gambian's governance structure, more an issue at the local government level. But let us be frank. This is a commission of inquiry targeting political opponents. That's why it was set up. Mm. But look at all of Gambia departments, parastatals, yeah. ministries. Corruption is rife yeah. in every department in this country, in every ministry in this country. So the fact that Fangabuga said, right? Yeah. And council arguably is the smallest. Because the money we are dealing with is quite small. And I think that was the argument me and yeah. so many other people yeah. made during the campaign. Um, you know, the commission was based on reports from the uh, National Assembly F F Committee, right? Yeah. But I uh, did reports. But obviously, we have seen reports from the Office of the President. We have seen reports from other departments, and nobody is looking at that. Even Watson Gambia will tell you their famous story, the Gambia Ports Authority you know, story. And up to now, nobody is investigating any of this. And at some point, you know, people are saying, you know what, uh, some people are more important than others. Animal farm. But you, you talked about something that is very important, more having strong institutions in the country. And I think problem mm -hmm. uh, because if people feel ne their jobs are threatened. Yeah. If they, they don't have strong institutions that back them in office, they are just going to do whatever their superior says to them. And it seems like in all the um, aspects in the country, my central government, local government, focus at Lorik, Lolo Mo Heo Siri 2016, when this government came, the agenda was transformation. Yeah, civil service, civil service reform. reforms, security ref service reform, reform, a new constitution. Da so you yep am a good. And Tay nga hold national budget be um you're like are we targeting our budget for development or are we um what are we doing? Right. So, so holy the real me based on that and everything, what's your perception? Are we going on the right direction? So Gambia is definitely not going in the right direction. And just to take you back, um a, co a commission is not even required, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You have parliament, FPAC committee, mm -hmm. they have a report. If there's adverse findings, I think the normal thing is to give it to the police yeah. or attorney general's chambers. To investigate and Just prosecute. In in investigate and prosecute. Yeah. That's the shortest route to solve this problem of corruption. Mm -hmm. Secondly, there was the anti-corruption bill. It needs to be passed. Yeah. I think there should be an anti-corruption agency as well uh, to investigate all allegations of corruption. Mm. If we do not fix corruption in this country, no matter how many roads we build, no matter how many buildings that come up, this country will always be backward. It is not about the infrastructure we see, it, or, uh, it's this infrastructure we cannot see. Yeah. That's what makes countries develop. And now let's talk about Gambia's development. We have the slowest internet yes. in Africa. The most expensive. I had just had a meeting, I would not say, but with experts, mm -hmm. and they said, usually when you have an undersea, when you are a coastal country, the undersea cable is right next to you. You should have one of the fastest internet. So amongst the coastal countries of Africa, we have the slowest internet, as if we were an inland country. Now let's talk about incomes, GDP per capita. Mm. Gambia has the top 10 lowest GDP per capita in Africa and in the top tw in the in the sorry the lowest GDP per capita in Africa and amongst the lowest GDP per capita in the world I think the 20 poorest countries Gambia is part of it let's talk about education mm. look at the results that are coming out yeah let's talk about disposable income mm. every day people are facing high skyrocketing inflation yeah we are import based economy our currency is devaluing Inflation is very high. Most people are depending on remittances or handouts to survive. Look at unemployment. You don't need to look far but the back way issue. Yeah. Gambia per capita has more youths going to Europe back way than any other country in Africa. Per capita. 
So when you look at the social problems Gambia is facing, it has never been this bad and it's amongst the worst in the world. So we have serious, serious problems to tackle. Politics should be the last thing but we should be discussing. We... But Talib, I, you know, before coming to the show, somebody came to fix my internet at the house yeah. and we were talking and he was telling me in the village in Jambur how yeah. Yeah. 42 young people yeah. went through the back way and they could not yeah, see absolutely. any of those people. They, no traces for the past absolutely. one month or so. Absolutely. And the whole community are dumbfounded. They don't know. In some houses, five to seven people from one compound, same mother. He told me there's this particular guy whose children, four of them, same mom and dad went on the same boat, no one knows anything about them. And and still, politicians are talking about, you know, the little things, the things that don't matter. And the young people, you still talk to them, they'll tell you, I'll still go, because there's nothing here for me. So there was a funeral, I think it was one of those uh, towns, either Jambur, I don't know, um, a month ago, uh, some youths were being buried after be, uh, ha having died yeah. in this backway journey. They were friends of that youth with their backpack, attending the funeral right and on go. their way wow. and when they were asked and they said key time a so the level of hopelessness in this country has skyrocketed and it's youths have, i feel disenfranchised they feel that politicians are not speaking to their problems they feel that there's not only hope now but for, for the foreseeable future there's no hope and now we have a phenomenon even women girls mm. are going back way yeah. So this country has huge problems. Access to finance, huge problem. Yeah. Yeah. So jiggy would, uh, certain circles of uh, society, yeah. there's no chance that I'm alone no. to start a business, to build a house, to buy a car. Um, and of course, if you're going to even get a loan from a, if you're a legitimate business or you somebody who people know as credible, the interest rate is 18%, 20%. Nine out of 10 times, you're going to default. So the fundamentals of Gambia is dangerous. Mm. And then you think I'm 60% and over youth population. You see opposite youth see amun ligi, nyingi on drugs, amun hope. So if we do not attack the problem now, you know magneka criminals in their 40, 50, you know magneka a problem for society. So they say youths are either an asset or a liability. But Talib, you know, you know, how do we fix this? People say politicians like you and yeah. Baro and Yankuba Dawa and others don't give us the young people that opportunity. When yeah. you have a multi-million dollar contract, you give it to the established business because you can all put because you feel that they are the ones that can deliver. But if you don't give us that chance, how are we going to grow? So and this is the problem. How can we help the young people of this country? So first of all, I think councils are doing as much as they can mm -hmm. with the little power they have. Okay. Um, and I just complain, we have limited administrative control. Uh, we have limited ability to generate resources. Even as councils, we are not allowed to take loans. Our subventions are not given to us. We cannot evaluate properties in our own municipality. So we are so restricted administratively the impacts we can make are very limited. And the young one, the president, the Munglon Bosni, you know, Momun Marcesa. Yeah, he said that. The truth is, we own the markets by name mm. because we generate revenue. But all the councils, as I speak, don't have a single title deed to show a property they own, including the offices they sit in. That's the fact. So. I cannot do urban planning mm -hmm. because ministry know I'm physical planning. I cannot zone my municipality. Ministry know a zone. I cannot evaluate properties in my municipality. I cannot employ or terminate my staff. I cannot take loans. I don't receive my subvention from government. So my hands are tied. So the little impact we do, we spend a lot of time and energy to do it. So I don't think you can really blame councils for the things they're doing at a very limited level. But what is important is there should be a national conversation mm -hmm. at a political level to understand that these issues we're facing are existential. So they're in a failed state. Issues in your discourse, Neil, and they set and set and move them out of control. Yeah. And leaders don't know what went wrong. So as we see these economic indicators going badly, we should step in and tackle it. Gambia right now, our port is one of the most expensive to bring in goods. Yeah. And this is all aggravating the cost of living. When you look at quality control of food, 
we have the, some of the weakest regulations on oversight. And God knows what Gambians are consuming. So what has been happening over the years, we've been grooming strong men to be leaders yeah. with weak governments. Yeah. So there was a famous saying that you need weaker men and stronger so institutions. institutions. Yeah. And this is what I promote. We need to invest in our institutions, checks and balances. And leaders must look at the institutional performance as their legacy. How strong did I find the institution and where did I leave it? But so you individualize your man more definitely, man more definitely, man more definitely, man more definitely. And you're going to go as an individual. Yeah. And if you go as an individual, no matter how great you are, the country collapses back to its state. So I think it's about time you want your wahabi. And you genuine about our intention to collaborate. Because end of the day, I'm going to go. The president is going to go. Yankuba is going to go. All these actors are going to go. And we leave the country and the government where it was. Well, what do we need to do to help the young people and right. um, advocate for, I see the president during the tour uh, talking about how uh, Bakwe, we could discourage Bakwe syndrome be. And he went further to say, um, you know, Saudi often in Gambians a lot of jobs for Gambian Idemfa. And somebody said to me, actually, that is the dumbest idea if anybody to promote. We need to create things here for our young people. <laughs> Listening to Usman Songo, and, I, and, and he says, you know, when, when people say, Makisal, definitely Talibi, definitely Yon, definitely, in, in, development is not infrastructure, mm. it's the mindset. Yeah. If the human mind is not yeah. developed, yeah. if your young people are not mentally developed and feeling that they should stay home and develop their country, there's no development right there. Yeah. And I think that is one thing that we lack in this country as yeah. well. Now, how do we help these young people to understand that? Yes, to understand that they should stay home. Number one, look at our youth and sports budget. What so, is there? So basically, I think... For the young people, nothing, absolutely. The declaration to outsource our youths is as if they gave up. You give up. Okay, then you're in transport problem in mm, uh, Saudi. Wow. Uh, but it means they're also looking at our youths as a liability and not an asset. The family tell you, you have gold, you have to pay for it. Of course, Saudi has to pay for it. Because young, able men with intellect, with capacity, mm -hmm. Especially in many of those countries, you have the aging population. Mm -hmm. I, uh, a lot of countries encourage immigration because you now you have a labor force. So when you look at your youth as an asset, a labor force, and Gambia is a labor economy. Most of the world is a labor economy, and most of the world, even Japan now, what they are crying about, Monica, I'm not enough youths. Japan is an aging population, same as Europe. But so you say America, I'm immigration program. Canada has a target to bring home a million immigrants. It is all geared towards stealing talent, stealing youth from countries who don't understand the value of it. Mm -hmm. So it's not a matter, they can be meeting but we cannot give up on our youths. Yeah. I heard I'm on a declaration of 150,000 jobs. Yeah. Now it's time, since there's that declaration, which is a great declaration, where is the plan to achieve that? How do we attract foreign direct investment? How do we boost local business? How do we encourage small business to make sure those 150,000 uh, 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 jobs are actualized? And Usman Songo, that's the fact. Yeah. If you have 1,000 people out of 2 million who are educated and have the capacity, and you have great roads, your country is still a disaster. Yeah. But if you have 100,000 or 200,000 people who are intellect, have the capacity, have the understanding, have the ability, so Amut Talisa, in five years, ten years, and you have the talent and the capacity to build a strong economy. So Lumalodan was right now, Gambia so is in GDP per capita. Last time I checked, I think it's five hundred dollars per person. Hmm. If we are to become a middle income country, more a comfortable country, we have to get to ten thousand dollars per person per capita GDP. You need five hundred. You need five hundred. I think Guinea Bissau. 600, even Guinea-Bissau, I think is better now. I think Sierra Leone is 700. You know, we are ranked as one of the, I think Somalia. So we are ranked with Sierra Leone, Guinea-Bissau, uh, Somalia, a lot of these countries that are not doing very well. 
So Senegal is at $2,000 per GDP. The average Senegalese, average, is four times better off than the average Gambia. You know? So these are the economic metrics that one should look at. Once we get that, tell you yep nanyo, because even tell you nyo sampa now, then you come then you nyan you menu. Yeah. Yeneni are loans, loans that we can never pay off. We will pay for the rest of our life. I yeah. saw the national budget five billion dollars in interest alone. You're not even paying the principal. Yeah, interest rate. The national debt is ninety billion. When our uh, 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 budget is, I think, twenty billion or so. So when are you going to pay for all your programs until you can free up money to pay this debt? Virtually never. never. What's going to happen in five years or ten years? Somebody will have to go and ask for debt forgiveness. So we are going towards insolvency. And the point, of Monica, look at the real value of that money. Mm. Because you also hold a $20 billion a year. Two years ago, when the dollar was 50, and now oh. when the dollar is almost, 70. Almost 70, yeah. That money has lost about 30% of its value. Because you know, we are not a producing country. Mm -hmm. Everything that government has to buy, all these things that we have to procure, are going to be on, uh, with the dollar. And on top of that, we are having skyrocket inflation. Cost of goods, you know, we are even facing it at KMC. We have a budget for the year, we have a paper, we have a budget $1. We have a budget $2. Yeah. So that put pressure on your budget. Yeah. So it's not the number boy declare. Motor money, sometimes they focus on the wrong things. Yeah. You who like number means nothing. But what are the economic indicators you need to pay? So how come Limo, they were last time, you know, uh, Central uh, World Bank, you know, we are doing well. Yeah. And multiple <laughs> finance minister, you know, we are doing better than we before. Uh, Madega, you know, new government, you know, import cover, we, that's Baro's favorite thing. <laughs> Salary, you know, curriculum, you know, six months and all the stuff. But man, I'm not doing well. Uh, some, my neighbor is not doing well. The other person is not doing well. Cash power, we don't need that day. Triple na, double na. Asta for life, forty percent increment. Fuel gen na shares. Supporti sukur bal ki demba. Sume jang habi mune ma supporti sukur mune seventeen dollars sila. Buru ten dollars si. All of these things. But the income is not growing. Yo, guru ne kulo di grow sa income. Wa linga leka legi. Luta ni juri saja. Luta ni leka because if so whole is enjoyable. You don't ever want to be in a situation where you cannot provide for your kids. You don't want to be Indignity. in a situation where you cannot mm -hmm. pay for their school fees. Right. You cannot give them lunch. You cannot give them lunch. You cannot give them lunch. Absolutely. Absolutely. You cannot give them lunch. 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 Encourage you to say that. Why? Lunch. You cannot give them 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 lunch. And it comes back to dignity. Yeah. The dignity. Like so, I'm the basics for doing that. The far lose dignity. Yeah. And it's lose the dignity. I'm like, if you're not doing something, you're not doing anything. There's no problem. Because when we have the most of the halal tapale, the far halal tapale, most of the halal sacha, the far halal sacha, most of the halal prostitution, the far halal prostitution. And actually, uh, Dogumala, uh, see demolition. We're making this woman. This uh, video that's going viral uh -huh. on TikTok and Facebook. Uh, new daji plus and you yeah. ah, yeah. 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 excuse my language yeah. 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 because four full day I'm mm. a so full full of more Bopa. so I think like we said it's about the economic indicators more in economics than the basket the cost of a basket of goods no mm. they measure inflation it's actually an inflation theory so you need to look at the cost of basics what mm. mail this is how you judge. Government, you're going to salary, 30%, mm -hmm. I think, and another time, 50%. Mm -hmm. But what we don't hear government talking about is how about the 90%, the 95% of people? You know, have the legal in government. Yeah. There's no minimum wage that has been introduced. So they need to look at that. Don't want to civil servants or public servants send salary. And literally, you allow the population to fend for themselves. Because what will happen then, Monica, a businessman decides... So it's willingness to pay and willingness to work for that money. So you'd see legally then you hold and it's like, why would I take three thousand, four thousand, five thousand? So imagine you're talking about salary, 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 sal
issues that any should, government should look at should really look at, look at. social welfare yeah you know social welfare is very important so all AKMC right now people cannot afford their dwellings kir mm -hmm. yeah. rent dafaser social security should have been building a lot of uh, affordable houses and estates uh, to cater for those They're people busy buying bosses. you know so so mm -hmm. the priorities so nyun, the classic problem with governments like Gambia is the mismanagement of priorities and i and i wanted to bring something um during the COVID, I think before COVID, that during COVID, government yeah. they knew because like a monkey share, you yeah. know, they book a dimbele, you get improvise, yeah. uh, put dimbele business money, yeah. you gain a land, you definitely land waivers, support me. You get jail, you taxpayers, you nips in Hallis, you take it land, go for Malo, you want your cost, you want your court. But who is monitoring that businessman? Yes, the objective is you just land waivers, put Malo, you want your cost, you want your court. Central banks are not going to be able to do it. They are not going to be able to do it. Why not? Central bank is not going to be able to Government is not going to Business money is not going to be able to do And nobody is controlling yeah, there's it. No there's no regulation. Yeah. Nobody is going to be able to do it. Why implementation is not going to be able to do it? So, so, so. And this it comes back. So, we need strong institutions. So, we don't just need declarations or definitely, definitely. But on the ground, can mm. more make deregulate? Can more make the nudge business to make sure that people are getting affordable food, etc. Nobody. So what you are doing essentially is just creating more profit for the business person because now they're getting rice for the same for cheaper price and selling it at market prices. So you're just creating many millionaires in between. But the goal be was to social welfare. In economics, more price ceiling. You want to create a price ceiling for goods. Mm -hmm. So if you want to create price ceilings for goods, you have to have regulation, and mm -hmm. then you have to have regulatory agencies that enforce that. So I think feel a disconnect between there. There's nice declarations, and President B, that they want me, oh, I'm not time, you have a subsidy of this much. Yeah. But that Lulu is actually trickling down to the, to the average guy, and mm -hmm. is not. No. Yeah. So, um, President, what na nena? Puru yu buru yu mi fona. Ba nyu lako wahe. Mune hall na be hall. Ah, opposition wu akenen akenen. Da fa wara ligi akenen. Why na kumni ko hek is na contradiction because President da fa wahlo lo muton wasi wasi ifi governor si how na say mer de has si si esosi mune karanal mi na long ko imale kami for I mean I don't even want to repeat what he said but he shows intention ne bugana bring everybody to the table and when i had cdc here the new executive secretary that was the goal we hon nako si newspaper mune dafa fok ne dafa bugay ni president ak opposition bi ñu tok ñu waxtan uh because yen li ngeen bëgga ak mom li ngeen bëgga moy ben moy rewmi dem uh yen ñep yo elected to serve the people and yen tam da ngeen bëgga nek in government so he wants to have this dialogue are you guys open to that dialogue because for the interest of the people sakato wa yen udp yen mom <laughs> so two days, two days ago, I think he was at Bundung and he said, uh, I, got, I got the invite uh, the same afternoon. The same afternoon. No, no. President Buinu is region. Talib de Gluma. De Gluma. De Gluma. President Buinu is region. You are president of KMC. You are the I president the KM. Why mum boy president the real? Boy no, you don't go on red carpet. Now, every year I receive the president from Abuko. Every year, without fear, the 2018. Okay. No matter what the politics happens. Wow. One the one thing I say I will not attend the meeting. Okay. Because the meeting is a, in my perspective, political meeting. Okay. Um, 2018, attend now. 2019, when the split happened, mm -hmm. attend Duma, there was even insults against our party leader. Mm -hmm. I cannot sit and witness that. Okay. So, but of course, he's the president. Now, could you respect this more because my region, my wow. receive mm -hmm. And I go there all the time. NPP guy, yeah, then the the then the, so beyond, basically, right? beyond, mm -hmm. I was not invited. I was not communicated to. Namely, even Duga, KMC. So I just assume me, am executive coordinator now. So that guy handles the role. So I said, okay, fine. The day in which La Waranyo KM them stadium there, that afternoon, small protocol of my call. Oh, I'm legal and you receive a letter. 
ni le president dafa ñew stadium den dafa dem set OIC fe ka man gena na office man ne tayte lañ ini letter man ko kañ lañ ko dit mi ne ma dimba so if you are coming to the region and you genuinely want the mayor to attend which i have no problem yeah man i enjoy my little yeah. moments you, with you guys even bum ñewé set setal i was not invited that day yeah. what uh, i know they they needed trucks ma gena Bo and i knew there was a political motive Bo behind it ngane haarama dem hajjamal ko bo xamna ne politique la nga dem hajjamal yor jay jay sawaji waji minister of sport legi yow tam nga dem hajjamal ak ko ma and ak mom wa lu tam def lo bo mo ne bi i already left office so bale i got a notification even if not official mm. one day i got a notification one day be had already left office so basically i think these are some of the things that we need to change the tour has been happening for weeks mm -hmm. you knew you are coming to kmc it's not him but administration yeah they should have sent an invite one week before mm -hmm. what excuse would i have i would have never gone to the bundung meeting mm -hmm. mom man mom xamna lu tuddu ma fa day attend because mm -hmm. it's political yeah. but i would have gone to the stadium that's development mm -hmm. i would have gone to the oic and all the roads he's the president we cannot change that he's our president yes we cannot change that one day basically i think the majority sometimes with the admission man dama fog ne kena mo tok last minute rek mine haranyu na invite nañ meyo kenen panic rek mine haram ma sen ko ko rek gaaw pour mané invite now but that's not an invitation mm. you know so i think uh, basically what we want to see because mom mom ñewé bundung one of the things he said was i think he said kmc enemy of progress enemy of progress I, something I, like I that i think it was read that i think it was a news article kmc do ker fatu de fenen hamna standard la or something i read it somewhere, somewhere. it okay. said about kmc not willing to work with government or oh, kmc wow. motamu ini ñun opposition lañ mota mu ini uh, uh, coordinator okay and basically two days later when he wants to work with the opposition mota man it has to be genuine yeah um do you think the call is genuine and are you willing man to... man i think i've been at the forefront yeah of actually bringing baro and our party oh. leader together yeah i've been at the forefront of trying to bring reconciliation mm. for politics be decent yeah but anytime you start the process it is uh, uh, sabotage or well, let's see let's oh, yeah. see what happens if you are called of course you know party leader jama rek la buga mom dikka bi rek la buga and i am 100% sure if he was engaged he would participate but he will not participate on what is something that is a political gimmick or politically motivated moy pour ñu ñew tok gaay woné né jama mu fa fek administrative ñi ngi arrest udp councilors or i mean it has to be genuine those things need to stop first and then you just genuine moves towards bringing national reconciliation kon dal fok yo yep stop dal bala nga na participer munu ma dem as my party as a party leader ñi ne nañ waxtan am jama ma gis ya nge mbejantu suma chairman or suma ay councilors it means ang ma buga use pour advertise hmm So no one can But if it's genuine I can tell you without even asking for authority from my party leader that he will participate. Wow. Legi nak ñu ñew ci yeen opposition bi. What alternative is the opposition bringing to the table? Dama ko dey wax man fu mu ne Senegal bi Gambia wax nako Gambia politique baye nako. Government wo opposition wo fe nga ko di 6 and 9 lon. Because Talib to be honest ah huh? baro sax yeen sax tane ngeen baro mu ne yeen rek day wax rew mi da nga gis lu am fi yeb look dama day wax muy civil society muy opposition muy press bi ku nek dafa am role bi mu wara play ci dikk bi waye bu de lu fi xew rek ku nek di ragal pour wax because bu gulo government mere la at some point rew mi dafa tollu nek dictatorship wara mu nek autocracy mu nek lenen ak lenen te dafa melni fofu len tollu gis nañ fi arrest nañ mamadou sabali Arrested ko, arrest siri fo song ko, arrest bora, madi, you know. At some point, amnu nyohamu ne legi dengi lawane moitu leman every day smo pa nema ni mol kani la platform ota afu e kana kumafu jere smo pa every single day. At some point, manu kubawa ya mara nte kirfatu soro na nganda hawo na tara bude fo fule nyotolu because it's getting to that place where so iwa sani nyi dengi lawane bail sahel lu komo edinga am problem. 
and president said it mune togise mu meralen udp yen rekade fu yi rafi wax yen every day ngen ote press conference ngen ote but lima de wax moy what is the opposition also putting on the table because diga diga ah ak nu muna muna meti opposition warna bring alternative for the people jox len tuti hop sude sude dañ gomne um government neku de ak right all the time war nañ ko wax war nañ ko jiffe war nañu bring alternative fan la udp tolu sil li yep so yeah, 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 it's a loaded question. Uh, I think uh, UDP is a big party, is a well-structured party, mm -hmm. um, like any party, but in a different, different individuals, but in a different, different factions. Only go with it. One day is what all normal parties have. One day, you ability is our ability to come together mm -hmm. when it calls for it. So, Muna yon neka same party, and I'm not a big fan of Fatu in my party. On the best buffer to make a swing flag bearer, I don't care. Fatu is our flag bearer. We're going to support her 100%. Mm -hmm. So UDP has that pull effect. I'm not ability bobo. Now, in terms of speaking to, of course, what is happening in the country and, of course, arrest you, if UDP did not talk, Borosibo from the Neka president, I think so he should value the democratic right to engage and speak your mind. Mm -hmm. However, mantam I believe ne democracy or freedom of speech milune lula ne regnawa, including saga, ag threats, ag yoyo. I think it's about keeping the government to account, mm -hmm. criticizing, um, making sure ne government be is not going offhand, mm -hmm. and of course picking at their weak spots. You know, opposition ne. Then you say fanga faulty, you you exploit ko, and to show people ne we would be better if we were there. That's what politics is all about. And if done right, the far degeral dikab. Nyom to abisunyo the far laws to guide freedom of speech, to guide let's say radio stations. It should be done in good faith. Moinga defko with a meaning ne bena de mandu manekat president. And I might even find myself on the other side criticizing a sitting president as a former president. Yeah, we've seen it. Yeah, whereas former president, rogna indi criticize sitting president. Ah, Kenya. Kenya, Ghana. One, one week, one so week into after election, if you create, we cry foul. If you create a bad law, mm -hmm. okay, let's say in 20 years, Baro is no longer president. Yeah. There's a different... 20 years. In 20 years time. No, I'm just Kon, saying. Kon, in 20 you, years, for Kon, example. Kon, 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 no, 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 in, in five <laughs> years. In five years. Let's say in five <laughs> years, he's no longer president. You talk, being a president, you did have blunders. You did have blunders. You did have blunders. All of America, look at yeah. one of the most ah. democratic countries like in the world. Donald Trump. Can we now have a former president? Let them the UU court be the top court. So now. basically, you can create laws that can eventually affect you yourself. Mm -hmm. More than that, the law is different. Different looking for you. Yeah. Pay a click. Be for support money. Gis. And money in good faith. The guy gis ne fi be fau. Yep. Na yam ne luwa bi luwa bo bahala. And I think America is speaking of it. One of your study founding fathers of America. I'm not sure you in the far in the 1800s. But hey, we need preserve some democracy. So low lenge or a foresight of a leader, and the accept ne mandu mumu na neka leader forever. The ma buy, and future we how malui how yala rag more de doga. So basically, I think um, it is very important to allow freedom of speech to happen. So if you can don't go regulate, regulate it with good faith. Huh? Okay, Fatu, you can criticize government, you can say whatever you want. But Basically, I mean unfast. if you start using uh threats and ni 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 ni, there's this regulation, there's this penalty, etc. Well, one day is not to do it in bad faith because they're not target Fatu rec. Mm -hmm. So they're not defer law for Fatu or they're not teacher to Fatu. So I think Gambia Digala, then they wanna it is a growing democracy, mm -hmm. uh Janga Agyoyu. But Janga Bekan, I we've seen examples in the world. Mm -hmm. And everybody is knowledgeable. Let's just change it uh, uh, for the better right now. Mark Janemune, please tell me, Ben Suda, I love and adore him so much. Mark Mom, <laughs> tell so, so him I love so him well. too. Now, when you see UDP, you have to factions. In all parties. Why are you not going to stop? No, 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 Room of Igena, then let's address the elephant in the room. You know, Talib, Munge Waja, Talib Mune, I'm not come all, can as executive, the Kodamo Wanga Japalema, for Maneka, the next flag bearer of UDP. Now, what a donor, Dalusi Nudabo, 
waye suma ko amul nak ma ngi jëm ci boro lu mpp soxla nañ ma wala nak dama fom suma on party is that what happened that is a false story and i think it was done in malicious intent um man nak because of the nature of my position both in the udp and in government um people feel me probably i may have too much influence etc so sometimes you know some fan uh they they love to create conspiracy theories mm -hmm. uh, because in two years for example there's been a theory that uh, mm -hmm. at the same time there was a theory man la select now all of a sudden the mobuga starts my own party so it's normal you have to take it in your stride so bokeh politics mom and especially in my position mm -hmm. this comes with the territory you have to accept it um one thing they also uh, uh, are doing in their minds is probably to make me unpopular with the fan base mm. um but it can't it can't work i'm a man my personality is pretty consistent young uh, i don't have wild rises or mm. wild lows man hamna fuma jim hamna luma buga def and i'm pretty consistent now another thing that i think i've made it clear in my audio mm. It's my constitutional right yeah. as a Gambian mm -hmm. to start my own party, yeah. to affiliate with any party I, mm -hmm. I like, mm -hmm. to go independent if I wish. It's yeah. my constitutional right. Yeah. On the UDP, and I have no reason to leave UDP. Party leader Dabo Latopa, I have no reason not to uh, follow him. So this also taboo will they create against people who are not the presidency. Is every Gambian's right to be a president? Of course. Man, I'm not being a businessman. Come on, Musawa. Me ne ma talib. So if I go to presidency application, man, my job apply. Okay. Me ne man niyebi nyuma sen grassroots politics. Okay. Okay. Me okay. ne ma but niyebi nyuma boga neka a president. Mom, that was his perspective. Mm -hmm. So it's very terrible in our country to vilify people. Ah, kida fa boga neka president. So so what? So if I go to niyebi fa boga neka president. But the point of the matter is, man, I'm not that conversation with anybody. I've never had that kind of conversation with anybody. Mm -hmm. Even people who are my fans, Magiana is one of my fans, but even people who are a huge fan of mine, mm -hmm. and they might any for some plus you, even when they come to me and say, you only do some plus, president, yeah. I don't even react. Yeah. I mean, I said this to somebody, uh, Sagana. Uh, somebody was talking to me, and we were talking, uh, and Kenan Mungo expressed in our way, we explain, 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 Monaco. No, that's not Talib talking. Monaco, if you even have a conversation, Monaco, you've been the guy neka around Talib, need to go and say our next president. That was my like. That's all you get from him. Exactly. So Monaco, no, that's not Talib. That's what I said. I'm but again, bena, you never bena, know. Yeah. I'm not being a so religious affairs manager. They talk to my office all the time. Me yeah. Monaco, yeah, you could learn yana. You're learning neka president. Do they want Amin sir? Man, it's psychological. Luta, regal na hala. Luta. No. I'm not new to learn Talib. You know you. No, you have affairs. You know you. Tali, buganga neka president, buganga neka party leader, sufa dabo nekut. Why ni mi nyulo ko ngangsa, ni mi nyulo ko jaya. Ragala dala. No, because I'm not party leader. As far as we know, momo neko swing flag bearer and still is on paper. Yeah. I can't go into that point. Understand? Dabo swing leader la. Yeah. And even so, I'm a ambition for the future. And Dabo is there. You wait for him. The fact of the matter, if Dabo is going to contest, people like me will never. Uh, even consider it mm -hmm. because we see him as our leader. Yeah. But lu jotut jotut. Sufa nekun nak. Jotut. Sufa nekun nak dinga buga. Jotut. Dinga buga. Jotut. Man, look, I am very man. I'm a politician. Okay. I have a platform of a mayor, mm -hmm. and of course, in politics, you always want to rise, have more influence, mm -hmm. have more control, have an ability to bring more development, mm -hmm. have a legacy. Mm -hmm. So, can do muna deny ne, a mayor who to rise? Yeah. We all want to rise. Every mayor, all eight regions, call large, yeah. even parliamentarians. So, the question more neka timing. Lu neka amna time. Uh, muna am right now, I cannot act on any ambition. But five years, ten years, I feel be, it would be the right time to act. We act. Yeah. One day, basically, lu jotut jotut. Yeah. So, man, I am not one to hide my ambition. I'm not one to lie about or live in love about what I want. Uh, and certainly, oh, my can small office put work off as a rule. And if I did, the matter how it on a platform, my work off. And let me tell you, so if you're going to form a party, the form is my party. The form is my party. The form is my press conference, the form is my party. Come on, saga, saga, saga. Come on, topa, topa. This is my conviction. One day, it's just not my conviction. 
So mando mado gene audio gausa. When I felt the need to clarify mm -hmm. because just on now they them nay be the confuse some of our supporters. Yeah. And our party needs stability. 2026 mm -hmm. as an organizing secretary, I believe is our election to win. Yeah. Okay. I believe truly, truly is our election to win. You believe so? I believe. It. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Um, and I believe our party will pull together when the time is right. I'm going to be time to go ahead of the day. Are you ever considering going uh, to NPP? No. Is there a definite if no I, if or I wanted to go to If I wanted to go to the NPP, I would have gone by now. But it's my mayoral election. Even before that, 2019, we split the army. I could have gone. I am a sitting mayor in the biggest municipality, mm -hmm. not the biggest region, but the biggest municipality, arguably the most influential municipality. Mm -hmm. I could have gone again when I was national organizing secretary. Now I have two heavy portfolios. I could have gone Bala mayoral election, Manopal Smobova. I don't have to compete with the, the president. I could have gone for bigger positions. I could have gone. Why wait till now and go? Meaning I don't have an intention to go. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. I don't have an intention to go. I am with my party based on principles and values. Usain Udabo specifically because of Lum Defal Dekabi. Monsumoko De Hol, Dumoko De Hol as just uh, the man he is today. But the man he was when he started politics mm -hmm. and the sacrifices and the journey he went through to give us young guys today Purnu Am boldness be and the ability to demonstrate who we are. When the Monsu Defu Jar Jar Yuru, this interview wouldn't happen. Mm. You would not have your kerfatu. Mm. I would not be mayor. Yeah. Because of the political dispensation at the time, allowed pro proliferation of media, mm. allowed freedom of press, mm. allowed young characters like myself to compete in politics. Could I be in UK or in America? Do you talk? And it's all because of the sacrifices of this man. So in Kameyo Darana, in Kameyo even president, the president, Dabo had to go to jail. So in Kameyo Darana, you can criticize him for whatever. Ninko made that much in this man's political life and his, in his history. So man rolled off my for Mokode Hall, Motopoko. So basically, if there was any reason for me to leave UDP, I would say it. Man because end of the day, I chow sa chow, si sa kona, man madef sa madef, man ragalo ma chow. 2018 will be chow la deka. 2021. Ñu <laughs> 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 Moi dengan bukan nak presiden lor, rek mula fitek. Luta, luta cawu bide bari all the time. Pih, all, I mean, dengan orang bide, all the people dengan orang. Hello, Rohilo semua sister, dungi dem si baro. Kero, ah, UDP, si Rohilo ni nak diwah nyomi nen diwah. Nga, tak tahu dia, fengkita dia, why bukan dia ola? Ni kon social media bida nu. So those kind of stuff, you know, why is it that it's 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 always very crazy no, with you. Uh, it Why? would be very difficult to answer that question because. Look, guy, oh, the family because, guy, all win. They inform me you say intense on direct money. I'm going to make a president. No, so uh, definitely to be quite some frank, of them. Some of them. To be quite frank, a level of chow man versus other people. I cannot gauge that. Yeah. Because man, do my do my day neka si si And 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 definitely fuma 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 nyo. Even if people were talking about it, they will not talk about it. One at of a bonds when you're in Yaba. So, you politicians, you problem, Lula. A lot of the time, we see a lot of smiles. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's what. So, mm -hmm. I think Yan Yal and Muna judge uh, that, mm -hmm. that, 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 that. Like, Yang, you want a 2026 Yan and your position. Yen, you know, Rohim, Rohimadic Lu, Demna and PP. You know, Mungsion. You know, Mungsion. You know, 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 you you know, Tali Munsion, why you walking on a demo? Lo, he did not have in the light because my mother, my sister, la, did not do it. Why did not look over? You know, Tali Munsion. You know, I'm not kidding. Go to my turam. In fact, my brother Sabali. You know, mom tam. You get room on the Sabali tam. Guess not kena. We only my audio. We only my is it through Sabali is going. Why are you angry? The yip I can't gamble in sympathy. 
talib ben sura rohi malik lo sabali campaign manager national organizing secretary rohi mo is like secondly you know first president of the so lolu yep su de ñu ngi wax ne ñepp nga dem npp yen fo len fo len mëna jëlé rew mi bu de sen 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 most influential young people yep ñu ci yor i think number one lolu moy politics it comes with the territory mën lo ñaaka am place mën lo am place nit ñaaka wax sa affaire ah fok fok wax nek ci on everybody um du tay lañ door di wax ne talib mi ngay dem o talib mi ngam different motivation and i'm sure rohi or sabali probably had these things many times yeah one day you cannot allege without evidence, evidence. Uh, you cannot say for a fact ben nit ki dem uh, all i can say is as far as i can see as far as i know i don't think any of them ñung ci yon including myself i think fi period la in politics bu nga xamne there's no election happening yet mm -hmm. so of the very speculation agwa which is normal mm -hmm. but i think in 2025 grand be really na shape up and se fekke ne amna kuy dem na na feñ because time bobu la mo dem se fekke ne amna kuy ñew tamit na feñ because time bobu la ñoy ñew wonte man as far as i am concerned mm -hmm. individual gain a party degala amna tuti impact but not not that much because people at the household level ñu nga xamne ñoo dey make decision i don't think we'll make those decisions because ki dem na ki ñoo na ñom dey going to look at the general direction of dekabi they going to look at the general policy of party bi ak they going to look at kan moy candidate party bi and man suma su fekke ne dara jangal na ma about that issue moy man suma own election bu president bi taxawé ibu town mi ne holo suma minister yi suma ambassador yi and man said number of people you made dega big names you ma against former mayor former political advisors you today party aprc npp nrp gpdp all these turi minister presidency bo pa mi ngay campaign if anybody all the all big names dañu wax ne talib jehal and amna ñu dey ñew say ñene boy ba di nga ko mek fa gaay ñu sa code and they use money ñoma upa xaliss ci campaign bi ño control government ño control media suñu own staff ci council gaay ñu ne ye go waro li wax suñu staff ci ci bir council bi you could see somewhere openly saying goodbye ñi ngay sol chat bu len ne one day gum sa bopa is very important and then am party bu nga xamne tam gum nga ko is very important at the end of the day always remember tour yu reey yep 99% du ñom 99% ñi ngi tok seen kër ñi ngi noppé di sétane so ñun suñ party suñ agenda is to always keep the message at the grassroots so i don't think any big names are on the uh, uh, moving away from udp i think, I think so? allegations la rek because suñ warona dem dem nañ so kon yo as the national organizing secretary yo gumulo ne dal seen ay big gone ci kenn dina dem gumulo ci lool no gumako ah roomo ci ñe daw de so xewé na ma beta ah won té tam ah politics like i said business bi lañ nek so i don't say we can rule out anything but guy defuñ ben sa rohi lo séti ah president baro mom meyo banjul la baro president that is normal man sa suma jotone that invitation on time di ngeen ma gis ak baro an nañ kaf ñu suñu gisante dañ dé toñante amna bu ñoo dem sara ko nda sax mané ko ah duñ duga sa sa bureau bi ñu nuyu gaay mi ne ma direct xana dang fa bu ga tour safara am nga jokes fa ñu jokes ñu do am not a fan of that dafa ma jé ko tuti wala té am nga these are the things so basically kuma gisone that day mid the people to ma signe ak mom dañu wax né gis na dem na feka president mo ñoo suma region so i think ñun tam suñu support ay dañu wara jël seen time tam politique bi yëpp nga wax du lu nek nga alej waaw an nañ xaar be evidence bi woné bopam because tay yo nga né talib mu ngi ci yoon su fekke né dama dem lolu mënu ma téré yeah waaw that accusation su fekke né paré na pour dem lolu mënu ma téré ma dem so i think buñ irritate suñ political uh, position holders mm. buñ irritate uh, su so ñen nañ nañ supportante ñu ñu maslaha ñu def nanka time bi su joté yëm na leer na kon dal kenn demo kenn demo mu na wax lool mu na ba na legi as the national organizing uh, secretary yeah 
Uh, si lo le neka. Si yengu yengu. Two, three years. Like, uh, nene, like, politik mo mboko doha lo do deh doh deh. Uh, te ye yang ina yu opposition. Gisu mo ben, I don't see any activities uh, politically. Uh, si lo le neka. So politics dafa am... Um, and that guy, nene nak, nene yang fi rek. The jail, nene ni sen supporter si di yo. Di yo. <laughs> lo, eh, eh, no, lo, lo, how na yo lo. Who lo na ti ak MC Cham. Mano ko yo binga neke on GDC, every day nga complain. So guy jale sen nini. Te ima ingi si as a boss, every day nga njel kena yo buko de li. Mano ko nak politik, deme out non de. So why gis na lo lo yena nge def lo lo. But apart from lo lo, what else are you guys doing? So, you know, prepare sen boba. I think politik. Every day la dey dunda jarun nga def political rally pour ni ñi ñene yaangé politique politique mi ngay xew ci kër yi mi ngay xew ci suñu développement mi ngay xew ci waxtaan yu ni ñi di am politique every day mi ngay dunda politique ci life la bokka waaw so political event nak ak political activity doesn't necessarily have to be the same waaw so basically ñu légui lañ jogué in a huge expensive election for all parties and we had a major victory because popular vote be countrywide ñoko mm -hmm. win the most important regions ñoo len win so we are still within that year we are still within that election year so i think uh, time be luñ gëna prioritize moy office holders yi nañ liggéey mm -hmm. na parliamentaire ni defal lo loi yu ba na council ini development ñu mëna ini but in terms of political events and activities mm -hmm. as the time gets closer da nga gis moy ramp up nanka nanka mm -hmm. but not ne every minute gambia lumagis dp 2016 which has never happened more ne people are so addicted to political activity happening all the time rally 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 mm -hmm. rally, rally rally even 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 which is actually not normal yeah uh, for any country wow. when so you say by hell america sir it's usually two years before the presidential election sure. see the political activity there no? yeah. wow when it should not be 24/7 every year year in year out mm -hmm. what should happen do moneka there should be of course always political pressure on the incumbent as an opposition meaning our press always is working to make sure ne come not on wa when they do blunders we talk about it when they cross lines we keep them in check and of course legally tam fuñ len muna challenge based on the constitution ni challenge them so those are the normal political activities outside the uh, election calendar finally yeah. da ba moy sen candidate ndax la da ba moy sen candidate 2026 uh, I, i believe election year lañ de tana candidate based on udp tradition uh. um, so of course mom moy sen last candidate mom mm. moy sen party leader mm. um, we hold him now mm -hmm. as tentatively mom moy suñ leader either as a, a, a candidate or as a political party leader so 2026 that is actually when the decision is made so ken munta tontu lum len wax ku taxaw ne dafa tontu lum lum len wax bu gana taxaw da bu ga gay ñu ne nak fu mu ni no mom sa du munna tontu lolu right away right now ko tontu di mom su bugul kay on the am nga lu selection bi jotangul because udp democratic party la um su feke ne lolu mo nek ci holam sax wahangu ko mm -hmm. um, mom mom lum wax rek mo nek party bi party ñep la mm -hmm. uh, bari na ñu talented uh, mm -hmm. bari na ndaw uh, nit yang fa dal so mom he leaves the process open one day it will shape up as we get to 2025 2026 i think dir bi na gëna clear uh, one day i think uh, definitely um so time bi jote i think i think the party will always make the right decision i think Finally, Mr. Dabo celebrated 50 years of legal service. Yeah. Well, it's quite an amazing feat because he's been a lawyer longer than I've been alive. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so he's a lawyer 50 years, when I'm 37. That's so it's quite uh, remarkable. Yeah. Um, and uh, Kariambi has uh, 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 different moments. Mm -hmm. Um, Bumdore, uh, when he started as a lawyer, mm -hmm. the fight uh, human rights. I think his father was uh, in politics and he was fighting for him. Mm -hmm. And then Mujugi Fufuneka, commercial lawyer, highly successful. I think at some point the most successful lawyer in the mm -hmm. country. Then of course, mom, political fights, uh, etc. So it's been uh, a very rich career uh, with a mixture of human rights, commercial activities etc with highs and lows of course one day he's a gem double gem la sidika and he's somebody man i believe 
we should make monuments after him uh, uh, near a stadium airport who knows he's somebody who has a definitely definite mark in our history books mm. and should be remembered no matter what even if he's never president even if he but he must be remembered he must be etched in the history books definitely baromora na de flolo regardless of the politics i think it would have been very nice if the president uh, named something major after uh, uh, dabo just to 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 celebrate his life to celebrate his human rights record etc but i know na eventually uh, uh, very soon in five years udp na am government <laughs> and then see how you know you will do it then there was a thing you want to lolo thank you very much mayo lan nga buga wa kmc and of course the gambian people nga hamne gennen la dega be manyo kena nema like i can't wait you know it's always refreshing to 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 listen to you lan nga len buga wa absolutely it's been a while uh one day it was a deliberate break um, i think we did too much politics uh, during mayoral election we and i need to refocus back to work mm -hmm. i needed to rebuild the council to yeah. prepare the structures for the work to come but man my advice is always always the same uh moy how we treat each other as gambians mm -hmm. uh whether we have differences in religion tribe perspective politics uh is to see each other as gambians first deka bi dafa hat is the smallest country on mainland africa is one of the most densely populated countries in the world mm -hmm. Today I have many relatives in government. Many re people have relatives in the opposition. Yeah. Mota so sage group like Tony nga samboka. Yeah. Wa Tony nga samboka. So one should be very careful to condemn each other based on these I would say uh, social constructs. You focus on what binds us most in Dika. Um that's the message I have and to the government for one in a you know, opposition where nobody's enemy. We just see things differently. Right. We just see things differently. And when we are in power, you will also see things differently from us. Mm. On the what you should always put above uh, the politics, more the president be ote. Let's push the national agenda. Na njiri konsa ni fata njiri ngarobi. 2026 ni njiri ni njiri ate. Then you you move on. Uh, man, I always say, gone are the days where we should be taking power and prosecuting the guy mm. who just left power. Yeah. We should just have normal transition. Senegal mung fi presidency ang e transition ken sona luken. So we see that in many countries. Lolo moy deka bu sustainable. On the so by sel Gambia ko tok rek kenen ki dude muna tok. Mota is important to do things right now. Nga def lu ba lu correct right now and secondly pour new tempo politics. When a transition happens from a president new new a sitting president mu yeah. new program mu dem international missions and that should be the same happening at the mayoral level at the uh, parliamentary level at the councilor level deka bi dafa waran ne gambe is smiling cause and the kind of waran ne ah con thank you so much mayor it thank was nice so talking to you it's always refreshing it. hearing from you and i see a lot of people um sending their compliments sisla jadama Sibu um nyom sibu nyom mag jane you know everybody is saying they really excited to to hear from you and i see a lot of good compliments the guy mom to social media bi nyom nyom ah ñun mom xam nga ñun mom ñun mom dara du de ndaw udp mom na humba rek na reey rek mo to bes buñ amé deka bi it will be very nice really yeah wow ja ñu deka bi dafa ne dafa ou dara du de stress tak no ñun dara du de stress bi bara du de stress du yaga du de give up Wow. Wow. Dekabi supoya sa by force da farij. Never die. You didn't know lañ mel. Wow. Wow. Okay, thank you very much. Lord. Thank you very much. Always nice. If I ever diba, if I ever diba mung sus must studio bi tay mung ni talk. Tay mo escort talent ñew ne ko. Ne ma I here is the Lord Mayor of KM. Mung ni la de def soy ñew ni la de def. No tay rek la. Yo la mo toñ. Ah mun la toñ. Mung ni. Thank you very much Nuru Ibrahim and of course MC for coordinating all of this. Appreciate you all. To my team, good night to you all. See you next week when another guest. Bye bye. Residency Estate is a gated community located in Old Yundum, proudly developed by Swami India. Perfect for all looking for a quiet life with luxury amenities within an enclosed setting. 
When talking about the benefits of living in a gated community, safety and security is top on the list. They allow extra privacy, take away the hustle of unwelcome solicitors and create a safe haven for children to play in a trusted environment without traffic or speedy vehicles. A great sense of community developed through the meeting at a controlled communal leisure facilities offering an integrated lifestyle. A green environment and well-managed communal areas are keys to higher home standards, elevated quality of life and better property value should you consider home reinvestment in the future. Added to all is the location, just next to the airport and reconstructed main road, yet tucked in the tranquility of nature. Our purpose is one, your satisfaction. Contact us. Let us help you build your dream home in the Gambia. Yiruwa men kafata na tarambulo luto nga GIA Kago Complex Parendile puruka Julaya Sone Yandi kadungoni mfunti bunda na doko sembentu ya Banjul International Airport oto mensi nyafa si moluma melka fengolu ki bantala bankolu kang anin julandingolu fana faisi sula na kago doko lale bang katu masingolu bembulule ikafome ye forklifts melka selendironi njindiru ke baka solula melbe funti kang waranto kaduna na waya house olu kono nga dinkira sumayari ngolu fana sotole ifula mila fano mu metari kemeleti karo bela adung isi kago baka solu tano Mensita for ton town war. Ila sumaya fana for that tembeleto. Menka fendolu mabono for ikana tinya. For sene fengol lombang. Domori fengolu. Waranto jata kendea ni mbori ma fengolu. Kago bagasolu la taradula kendo. Asulata jama ni labang korosir langolu lela. Na double view x-ray korosir la masengolu. Aka kago bagaso kono kono jubele. Komi kago doko sartoli ya landi nyameng. Nyin double view x-ray. Amu jama ni labang rapid scan leti. Menka karafula korosiro keno kago sifa bela. Wati kilingo kono. Na doku lalu. Imu ayata karandingo leti. Mili ela doku no e faramansata kago doku na tamandiri nyato na doku la betea we am footing the RA3 makamoleto mensa tinna fo nze kago bagaso lu kinole kata UK and in EU banko lu kan GIA ka hakeli tenkongo dila na doku oto ite nyina la men every day is a new opportunity to make sure our first impressions are always our best and to see possibilities on the horizon. To make our facilities and services more accessible and find freedom all around us. With a location proximity to active markets with a liberal air transportation policy. That daily pursuit is how we turn everyday opportunities for you. For all destination marketing support, customized packages for new existing airlines and operators and for a highly ranked tourist destination, the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority is here to serve. We regulate air transport, operate and manage BIA technical requirements, merge with commercial considerations. We have experienced and well-trained aviation professionals to cater for your needs. For investment opportunities in building airport hotels, shopping malls, playground for children, do contact us on 4472-831, 4472-893. Gambia Civil Aviation Authority, we go beyond daily.